Welcome to another exciting episode of The Trading Bell. Today on the program, we'll be speaking to the CFO, that is the Chief Financial Officer at the KCB Group, Mr. Lawrence Kimathi. He'll be explaining to us how the bank has performed in this pandemic season, and they've crossed the one trillion shilling mark. What does this mean for the bank moving into the future? Before we get into that discussion, let's take a look at his profile. Lawrence Kiambi has over 15 years progressive experience in finance at senior and executive levels across many countries in various organizations. He joined the bank in May 2015. Kiambi's immediate posting was East Africa Breweries Limited, where he was the Group Supply Finance Director, responsible for 10 legal entities across six countries. He previously worked at AIG Property and Casualty General Insurance as the Chief Finance Officer. Prior to that, he worked at British America Tobacco, BAT, United Kingdom and Kenya in various senior capacities. He has also worked at Cadbury Limited East Africa and Central Africa, Kenya as the Finance and IT Director. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Accounting from the United States International University of Africa and is a Certified Public Accountant of Kenya. Thank you, sir, for joining us on The Trading Bell. It's been close to two years since we last hosted you. It has been a while. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be back. Yeah. Great to have you on the show. And uh, just starting us off, um, the bank has recently reported its financials. And uh, you've hit a profit after tax of over 15 billion shillings. And uh, generally speaking, the banking sector is gradually recovering, but not to pre-pandemic levels. What would you say about the numbers and what does this mean in the near term? Yeah, so you're right. I mean, the pandemic is still, is still, is still upon us. And uh, with the, in the banking industry, if you recall, actually, uh, when we announced, uh, the banking industry announced the results in 2020, yeah. the, top, the top line, the total income level wasn't so badly affected comparing 2019 to 2020. The issue was really the lead if, if impact of taking uh you know uh, impairments uh, ahead of of of, uh, of because of anticipated uh, uh, economic issues so so what we call forward looking mm -hmm. uh, information um we are seeing that in 2021 now uh, there is you know banks are, have, have uh, you know had already taken that that impairment in the previous year uh, and the the level of of impairment is coming down um, so, so f specifically for us, and that, that's for the industry, specifically for us, we also continue with cost saving initiatives uh, that, that we've been running across the bank for, for, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And that is also coming to, um, uh, to, to, to bear, uh, as, as, uh, as, as you said, uh, as we deliver the 15.3 uh, 15 billion in, pro in profit after tax. All right. And uh, speaking to these numbers, of course, uh, the banking sector has quote-unquote, remain resilient during the pandemic period. And uh, from your assessment, how soon are we likely to see banks into full recovery? I know mm. from your numbers, the numbers that you've reported so far represent a, about 83% of the bank getting back on its feet mm. and going back to the, the lending that you enjoyed before 2019. Mm. But how does the long term look like especially mm. when it comes to recovery of the banking sector at large mm. so when you when you look at the 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 the, the facilities that we had actually restructured and under what we called covid restructures uh, so you know ba based on on the um, in, uh, regulations from 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 uh, the Cent central bank of kenya yeah. uh, 90% of those are performing and uh, have gone back to performing normally we've got about 10% that um, that that uh, you know we have to take a longer term view on, uh, and those are sectors that we all know uh, will not recover overnight. Uh, you know, hospitality, uh, hotel industry. Uh, you know, the 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 fact that we haven't done announcing results the way we have done uh, today since March of, of of last year. You know, is testament to the mm -hmm. fact that. The, the hotels will continue to, to sort of suffer. And even the number of people we invited today is not the same number of people we were inviting in, in the past. So when you look at that, uh, in, uh, you know, airline industry, 
you know, those 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 will need to take a longer term a longer term view, and we've given them a longer term for them uh, to be able to to uh, sort of recover from a revenue generation point of view, and and be able to 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 uh, to service. The other part I would say with the vaccination drives uh, that we've seen. Yeah. <clears throat> And there's been a lot of talk about the inequality in terms of vac vaccinations in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, U.S. versus Africa. Correct. But those economies are now recording double-digit growth. We do, pa we do business with those economies. So there will be, obviously, a, a, a ripple effect to, to, our, to, our, to, our, to our economies when Europe is doing well because we trade with them. Uh, Vaccination drive is also picking up in uh, in our economies as well, and we are seeing people starting to sort of open up uh, cautiously, but you know to get back into 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 more of a, a vibrancy of the economy, and that will have an impact across. Economy does well; all the sectors do well, including banking. All right, and uh, Mr. Kimathi, looking at your numbers and uh, the impact the pandemic has had in the country and in the economy how would you say this affected the bank the the the, the, the various uh, various parts so if, if i start with the staff uh, you know we've had to learn new ways of of working uh, we've had to create you know team a's and team b so that you're able to keep branches operating even, even if there's a uh, you know a, a case reported within a branch we can close sanitize and and bring the next uh, the second team in yeah. uh, so so you know there's there's been there's been impact on staff we are supporting our staff uh, there's you know the, the impact on mental uh, issues on 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 this on, on the pandemic is 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 being big. So just looking at the human workforce uh, point of view, and and that uh, I think we 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 are we are managing fairly well. Going to our customers, um, <clears throat> a lot of our customers have 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 had you know their businesses really affected as you know you know with the with the with the various lockdowns we've had across our patch not just in kenya across the markets we're operating you know that has had impact on uh, on on their revenue so we've had to come in as a bank to support them by supporting them it means that you know when we look at how then do we account for that support when we are reporting uh, you know hence the reason why you saw a big jump in uh, in, uh, in in our in our uh, level of provisioning uh, to, to 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 in 2020 specifically, and then there is the shareholders. Uh, you know, we announced uh, one shilling dividend last year. We have not announced an interim dividend uh, so far, as we wait to see whether we are you know the recovery is really sustainable and we make a decision. So obviously, our shareholders are also saying. You know, uh, you used to pay me three shillings uh, fifty cents dividend. Yeah. I've only seen a shilling in the last uh, eighteen months, so that has also impacted uh, them overall. But I think all this is is put together in terms of just looking at the different facets and taking decisions that will safeguard the sustainability of the bank into the future. In the tied to this, uh, of course, the bigger conversation is how do we transition forward and uh, expand your income streams as a bank, moving away from non-funded income. Talk to us about what there's opportunities, mm -hmm. lessons that the bank is coming out with from mm -hmm. this pandemic period. Yeah, good, good question. I, I think I would say, you know, in uh, just as the, the pandemic was hitting, we were starting our first year of uh, our beyond banking strategy. Uh, and we called it beyond ba banking uh, purposefully, deliberately, because we believe that banks have got to reinvent themselves. Uh, we've got to look at the, you know the services, how we deliver our services to our customers in a very different in a very different way. Uh, one of the biggest pillars in that strategy is digital uh, end to end digitization. Uh, you know, uh, we have seen in 2020 a massive uptick of all our digital products. Uh, you know, be it ATMs, be it uh, POS, be it uh, agents, uh, be it our mobile. Uh, you know, customers, because they want to be safe, want to interact with you from the comfort of, you know, their 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 safety, and and we have you know uh, embraced that and invested significantly into our digital. Um, uh, you know assets, and you know we are rolling out uh, our big digital uh, uh, platform called Vuma. That has you know is gathering massive momentum. Uh, we'll see quite a 
you know, big step change in the second half of the year uh, coming, of, of, of coming out of that platform. Uh, and we believe this is how, you know, the customers will be interacting with us. Mm -hmm. There are those customers who still want to come to the, to the branches. So our branches are still open for business. All right. And uh, Mr. Kimathi, looking at the aspects around uh, operational costs, the bank uh, took a hit along those lines. Uh, mm -hmm. Just expound this for us. And uh, as we also expand this conversation towards talking about the subsidiaries. Mm. So from an operational cost point of view, uh, when I look at the year, 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 year on year performance, our costs have gone up by, by 7%, which if you take inflation, has been hovering around, you know, five to seven percent. You know, basically, you're, you're you're saying that we have we have remained flat year on year, which is which is a fairly good uh, good performance. And with your revenue growth uh, sitting at fourteen percent, uh, even if you take inflation into account on that, you know, it shows that you're you're delivering your revenue is growing ahead of 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 your cost and that you know comes comes to the bottom line which 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 was my opening statement in terms of what has aided uh, our PAT PAT performance um when i covered the cost to income ratio across each of the entities yeah. uh, you know overall we at 44 but there are entities that are as high as 75 80% now we are targeting those to ensure that there's a good balance between growing their revenues because cost to income ratio is a, is a, is an equation of the, of the two grow your revenues but also manage your costs and and you know that is something that uh, we are targeting especially the entities that are operating uh, bringing the average uh, upwards all right and uh, still staying with this uh, looking at the financial highlights of course customer deposits grew by 4% mm -hmm. hitting about 786 billion shillings from 758 billion shillings. And the, <clears throat> the loan portfolio also grew by about 9% to close at 606.9 billion shillings. What would you attribute this to? Does this speak to the fact that uh, the market wasn't shook as much as many experts had anticipated? Well, actually a bit on the contrary, uh, I would say, you know, our outlook was to grow deposits by 12%. We grew 4%. Uh, so we've closed at 786 billion. Uh, we've, and the reason why there's that variance between what our uh, target was and what we actually delivered is there was a bit of tightness in the market from a liquidity point of view. I think uh, in February and in April, there was uh, uh, articles in the newspapers that clearly talked about <coughs> money in circulation had reduced if money in circulation reduces it means you know that your your also your economic activity and and uh, you know um uh, the 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 uh, what do you call it the purchasing uh, purchase, purchasing managers uh, index, index yeah. uh, gets gets uh, gets impacted so we felt that in the first especially the first four months i would say this was quite tight we have seen a change uh, from June into where we are today, there's yeah. a bit of momentum that uh, that is coming through, and we believe uh, that we should be able to deliver that that uh, uh, level of growth in in deposits. And once you grow your deposits, then you deploy that mm -hmm. into loans, into investment in government securities. All right. I'm keen to hear from you. Which areas do you see growth in this time and space where? We're tinkering on another political season. At the same time, uh, we're still having the health crisis as mm. a country. Mm. And I'd be interested to know what opportunities are there outside Kenya? Mm. Well, the, the sectors, to be, to be, to be fair, um, with the exception of the hospitality, uh, which, which I think is also grown, but not as the growth is not as, as high as the other sectors. Um, all the other sectors are showing fairly robust uh, uh, recovery. Uh, you know, again, you know, the percentages might lie because if you're starting from a zero position and, yes. and you go to one, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, is, that is a massive, uh, you know, 100%. So, but we, we are seeing manufacturing doing uh, fa fairly well, education is, is back. Remember, it was massively hit, hit last year with Correct, closure yes. of schools. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing agriculture 
uh, mm. you know, uh, come, coming back, energy. So those, those there are sectors that mm. uh, you know we are we are we are we are playing in, and and and, and we are seeing recoveries. I'll answer your second, the second last part of your question by looking at geographical expansion. Yeah. Um, and and as we we've talked about in the past, we see two. Uh, markets that we are not playing in that we need to be playing in one is easier than the other drc is easier to get in because you know uh, they do the the, the the regulation allows uh, international banks to ca come in and we are we are scouting for for opportunities in there uh, and you know we shall be uh, hopefully reporting something positive soon all right uh, ethiopia is the other um, a market that geographically we believe we should be playing in it's, they've just completed the telco part of, of uh, you know, uh, liberalization. They, they had said once they, they are done with telcos, the next one is financial uh, sector. So we are hopeful that mm -hmm. uh, in the coming uh, uh, months, maybe, maybe year, uh, then we should see some positive vibes coming out of there. All right. And uh, the other markets within East Africa have been proving a big challenge for not just KCB but other banks with a regional footprint. And these markets have remained quite uh, hard to predict. This is Uganda mm. as well as mm. uh, Tanzania and South Sudan. Mm. Just give us uh, feedback in terms of uh, how has the bank performed in those two markets, mm. especially Uganda and South Sudan, mm. and uh, what mitigation efforts are you looking at in terms of uh, still maintaining a solid balance sheet? Yeah, all the international um, subsidiaries are making, are making uh, money. Uganda is the only one that did not perform as well as the same period in 2020. And that was because there was a one-off uh, windfall gain in, 20, in 2020. But in terms of the momentum, it's, it's uh, t definitely uh, riding in the, in, the, in, the, in the right direction. The, 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 the issue in Uganda for us is that we operate out of the top 10. So we are not a very big uh, a bank in there. And when you don't have, you're not in the top tier, then your relevance in that market is also, uh, you know, is, is not that high. Mm. So, you know, just to make a joke, at yeah. times the regulator might call a meeting and forget you. That's so <laughs> yeah so you've got we've got to create relevance yeah uh, there are two ways of doing that one is organic so we are looking to grow our our, our balance sheet mm -hmm. which has been in decline over the years mm -hmm. uh, and you know just just have a, a good um, uh, uh, organic growth and then the second part is looking at opportunities uh, for for inorganic so looking for for you know uh, assets that we can buy yeah. and you know argument our our our, our business in in, uh, in Uganda as we said earlier on the chairman did say that the our objective is in any market we operate in we have got to be in the top tier okay. that that is how you, you you create relevance south sudan on the other hand is a very different economy uh, and our south sudan uh, entity has done very well it has done fantastically well in the first in the first half of the year. Uh, we are bank number two in South Sudan, be just behind uh, uh, the Qatar National Bank, who came in and they do a lot of business with uh, with with government. So their facilities are lent to government, big big facilities, the support from their offices in in Qatar. But our branch network, actually, we had closed branches. In the last uh, three years, we are yeah. starting to reopen those branches mm. because the demand is becoming uh, quite high, and with the stability that we've seen from a political point of view in that in that uh, in that country, mm. and also with IMF coming in to support them, in the last one year, uh, you know the, uh, the exchange rate is being li liberalized. We are seeing do dollars uh, inflow. Uh, there is you know weekly auctions of dollars, so accessibility to dollars is is becoming. Uh, a lot easier so yeah. we're seeing we're seeing quite some good positive coming out of that market all right speaking about uh, good positive vibes uh, the unending conversation in the kenyan players has been who will cross their trillion shilling mark mm. finally i see kcb has crossed the mark mm. and what does this mean to the borrowers what does mm. this mean for the country and break it down for Mama Mboga. <laughs> so yeah, yes, we have crossed the one trillion mark. Um, 
this has a lot of repercussions, obviously, uh, implications rather, if I may use that word. Uh, one, we are able to, uh, you know, a big balance sheet gives you uh, a solid base, solid foundation and safety. So for Mamba Mboga, it means this is a bank that you don't, wa you don't have to worry about uh, return on off investment. And you know, I keep telling people there is return on investment, the amount of money you get back, and there's return off. You might put money in there and you never see it. It disappears. So for, you know, when a balance sheet gets to this size, you know that, you know, you're in safe hands. Um, from, from a general economy point of view, it also means that we are able to participate in a lot bigger, uh, you know, um, infrastructure development activities with government. Uh, we can, you know, be, you know, the, the lead uh, arrangers for facilities like doing, you know, the Lamu port. Uh, or you know what we we didn't uh, participate heavily like the pipeline so we get we we start being a development partner finance partner uh, for the government and obviously that trickles down to uh, to the to the to the monaiji all right and as we bring it to a close uh, the bigger challenge facing the kenyan market is uh, access to cheap credit mm. and this has been a conversation that elicits emotions from parliament all the way down to the common man mm. and uh, as a bank there are different uh, aspects happening in the background cbk is working on a couple of things mm -hmm. the kenya bankers association mm -hmm. and uh, as the man looking after the money mm. and looking at our, our our demography as a country and the economic fundamentals uh, what would it take to have cheaper interest rates of an economy of our size? Mm. Uh, I think the answer of that, to that question uh, can be found in the history books. So if you go back, uh, I would say maybe 20, not 20 years, um, maybe about 15 years, there's a time when, you know, uh, banks were lending at single digit. Uh, and, and the reason was the cost of money. Mm -hmm. had dropped down to, to, to those levels and it allowed banks then to be able to, uh, to, to, to drop their, 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 lending, their lending costs. Um, you know, when, when, when you've got risk-free interest rates hovering around 7-8%, uh, then as an investor you, in a bank, you'll go and ask the CFO, why are you taking the risk of lending uh, to Lawrence at 10% and you know this guy is likely to default and you can put this money in government paper and you'll get your money back. So there's that part that we need to address. Why is, you know, the risk-free rate so high? Uh, there's a time it had gone down to, you know, 2%. Yeah. That 15 years ago. So we need to look at that. Um, the second thing is just being able to do uh, what you would call in an insurance company uh, non-claim bonus. You know that, you know, when you insure your car yeah. and you've not had an accident for two, three years, you know, you get a better, a better rate. So we as banks also have to look at you as a customer and say, you have been with me for the last 20 years. I've rated you AAA. So if you're as good as risk-free. You're not risk-free, but as good as risk-free. So what I charge you the risk-based uh, pricing has to be different from that person who walks in right from the street. I don't know him from, you know, Jack Robinson. Yeah. I have to build a rapport and, you know, a, a relationship with them. So mm -hmm. they will get charged a bit more, but they'll work themselves downwards. The ladder, so we, I agree that to get the economy, and, I, you know, I was, I was telling someone earlier, you know, it's a chicken and egg conversation. Do you... Uh, you know, provide credit to drive the economic growth, or do you wait for the economy to grow and then provide credit? So, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to look at, as a bank, you've got to look at it from, we are the catalysts. Yeah. We need to play that part in driving the economy. All right. Yeah. That's a perfect place to end it. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you very much. And we look forward to having more of this into the near future. I look forward to this as well. Let's not wait for another two years. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. We'll make it count. Well, we've been speaking there to Mr. Lawrence Kimathi, the Chief Financial Officer at Kenya Commercial Bank, giving us insights into how the bank has performed and what does the future portend 
they are very keen on tapping into the digital space as well as going towards green financing. All this, looking to see the bank diversify its approach towards being an intermediary in the Kenyan market. Well, that's where we wrap it up for this week's episode of The Trading Bell Show. My name is Abi Agina. On behalf of the entire team, we say bye-bye, and we leave you with the financial markets.